Sorry for being on time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but I will call to order uh, this meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission, and let's begin with a roll call, Jackie. Commissioner Newman? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Welch? Here. Commissioner Westman? Here. Chairperson Story? Here. And will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I did want to take this opportunity to announce that the meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and AT&T UVerse Channel 99. It's being recorded and will be replayed on the, the next Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Uh, meetings can also be viewed on the city's website at www.cityofcapitola.org. And tonight our technician is Lynn Dutton. Um, and now we'll move on to additions and deletions to the agenda. Do commissioners wish to request any, uh, any from staff? Um, there has, has been a request to continue item 4C to the October 4th meeting. The applicant is working with the Coastal Commission to make sure that their development does not qualify as new construction. Um, with that, well, I'll um, entertain a motion to continue that item, but I do want to disclose that I am uh, recused because that is in my uh, geographical circle of conflict. Do we want to do that as part of the consent calendar? To continue it or? I think so. I think it would be best to do that when we get to the consent calendar. Good then, okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, at this time, we'll go to public comments. Are there members of the public that would like to address the Planning Commission on items that are not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, Commission comments. Are there any? Seeing none, uh, staff comments. No comments. No comments, okay. It's a, it's a quiet evening. Um, we'll have then the approval of the minutes of, uh, of the Planning Commission regular meeting of July the 19th, uh, 2018, and um, the regular meeting of August 2nd of 2018. And maybe we could handle those in one motion if that's possible. But are there any requested changes? No, I just need to uh, not vote on the August 2nd minutes because I was absent on that one. Then why don't I'll split those up then, and then yeah, let's uh, we'll then just focus on item three A. Is there a motion to approve? I would so move. And there is second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion passes unanimously, Jackie. Uh, so then on to item three B. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. It's a motion and a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll recuse myself Aye. on that one. So um, next then we'll go on to the consent calendar. These are uh, matters that will be handled with one vote unless anyone wishes to pull a consent item. Do commissioners wish to pull a consent agenda item? I don't wish to pull an item, but I do wish to um, point out an error on the Item number B4775 Garnet on the cover sheet of the site plan. The site is mismarked. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Garnet, not Emerald. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie moved it. Because <laughs> that would make a difference whether or not I can vote on it, I think. <laughs> yeah, we, we can make sure that's updated when it comes in for building plans. Okay. In, so I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar uh, with continuing item C, the 106 Sacramento, uh, to our next regularly scheduled meeting. 
Um, actually, I, if I could, um, I would like to maybe handle A and B and have sure. C as a separate vote since I must recuse myself. Okay. So I'll, I'll change my motion to recommend approving A and B on Thank the consent you. calendar. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second on uh, A and B. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, then is there a motion on item to continue item C? I'll make that motion as well. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, I will recuse myself, as I've said now for the third time. So um, <laughs> the motion passes. Um, so now let's move on to uh, public hearings. Uh, the first is uh, 210 Central Avenue. Um, can we have a staff report, please? Um, 210 Central, the applicant requested a continuation also because they, are, um, they need additional time to put the story polls up. We'll be sending out an email. We've asked them to place them one week in advance. And once we know the, the timing of when the story polls will go up, um, we'll be letting you know. So they'd like that continued to the two meetings out to November 1st, 2018, due to the logistics of booking story poll. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public that would like to address the commission on that item? Yeah, you're the only one, yeah. so that's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, seeing none, um, we'll bring it back uh, to the commission for um, uh, action. And I do want to disclose to the commissioners that uh, Katie and I met with the applicant on August Friday, August 31st, mm -hmm. just to discuss. Uh, the story posed and give them some guidance. Um, and they did, you know, they made a comment about um, not being able to find the actual procedures online, which we may want to book that for, you know, future discussion uh, about uh, having, um, you know, established and discrete procedures uh, for future applicants. Um, so uh, with that, um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item. I would so move. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Which brings us to item um, 6B, which is um, 609 Capitola Avenue. Um, this is the design permit and conditional use permit for in addition to a historic single family home with, um, with well, previously with a variance, but I understand that that's been withdrawn. Um, and so uh, we'll, why don't we just uh, get into the staff report on this item. Thank you, Chairman Story. Um, I just want to point out, first of all, that uh, the, the numbers that I'm going to be using in the presentation today were based on the final plans that were submitted yesterday. So in case you hear a floor area that doesn't sound like what was in the staff report, that's because it changed slightly with the plan changes. So. So 609 Capitola Avenue, uh, the applicant is proposing a 774 square foot addition for an existing single family historic residence in the R1 zoning district. The application with the modified plan submitted on September 5th requires only a design permit and a conditional use permit and the variance is no longer required as you mentioned. Uh, the existing residence is as I mentioned historic one story single family home. The defining characteristics include the H-shaped plan footprint uh, with its many narrow gables. You'll see the H a lot more clearly on the existing floor plan. Uh, the north and south side gables and eaves and trim. The front and south side focal windows and the front door with the distinctive oval viewing window. The structure also has a wide horizontal, has wide horizontal siding under the north and south side gables, shingle siding under the front entrance gable narrow horizontal siding from the top plate to just below the windows and board and batten siding below. There's also a front deck extending to the southeast corner of the building that is covered by a trellis uh, and an existing non-conforming detached garage is located at the northwest corner of the site. Um, the garage was relocated from what is now 612 Oak Drive, the lot behind this, when the lot was subdivided. And the location, which does not meet the setback requirements, was approved with a variance under permit 00 54 in 2000. 
This is the existing floor plan. You can clearly see the, uh, the H shape referred to in the historic review. The attached garage would require a second driveway with a new approach, shown in green, which would result in the loss of one street parking space. The existing driveway on the right-hand side, shown in purple, includes enough spaces to satisfy the parking requirements, so the second driveway is not required by the code for this project. The property is located in the coastal zone, approximately half a mile from the beach and 400 feet from the Capitol Avenue, Bay Avenue intersection, in an area with a high number of commercial establishments. This is the proposed floor plan with the uh, modified garage that was on the plans yesterday that meets the required rear yard setback. The proposed project includes a significant alteration to this historic structure. Significant alterations to historic structures require approval of a conditional use permit by the Planning Commission, so that's why that's included with the project. The historic architect reviewed the application for compliance with the Secretary of Interior standards and made findings that the design complied with most of the standards, but a few elements did not fully comply. The review included five recommended revisions that would make the project fully comply. The project, the revisions, and added conditions will be in compliance with four out of the five recommendations. The only item not addressed is item five, which involves the roof slope on the new addition, because there was some disagreement between the designer and the architectural historian regarding the appropriate slope of the roof on the new addition. So these are the existing elevations. Um, a commissioner emailed me earlier today about whether the um, inconsistencies called out in the historic uh, memo were cleaned up, and they were, so now the existing and the proposed that I'll be showing you here uh, match. So that was important on the window detailing that you see on the, uh, the east elevation and the south elevation on the focal windows. Uh, so these are the proposed elevations. Uh, and this has the modified garage size. So the, uh, if you look at the south elevation on the left-hand side, that the, has the shortened garage. And then on the bottom there, I, I did a call out for the, the shortened eaves. They were two feet, and they were reduced to six inches. Uh, at the Architecture and Site Review Committee meeting on July 25th, the designer told the subcommittee that he had created a draft roof plan with a lower pitch, which was never submitted to the planning department, uh, and thought it looked out of place with the rest of the building and said that it conflicted with commonly accepted design principles. In order to have the roof, roof slope of the addition match the existing 6 and 12 roof slope, the proposed project includes a flat roof in the middle. I called it out there, the rectangle in the center. Um, with 6 and 12 roof slopes going to the edges of the roof from the corners of that <coughs> rectangle. While the roof slopes of the addition do match the roof slope of the existing structure, the result is that the roof design increases the massing of the structure. The architectural historian recommended that the roof, store, roof slope of the proposed new addition be revised to less than 6 and 12 because a lower roof slope would lessen the impact of the currently proposed roof massing at the rear addition. This roof plan sketch was provided by the architectural historian as an example of what the modified roof could look like, and the next slide shows what this roof slope would look like on the elevations. These sketches also include the shortened eaves on the garage that were incorporated into the plans yesterday. So these are the uh, alternative, we'll call them the alternative roof plans provided by the architectural historian in elevation view. And I'm going to put these side by side so that you can see these better later in contrast. Staff is requesting direction from Planning Commission regarding the slope of the roof of the addition to this historic structure. The next several slides show two different roof styles uh, from each elevation. So this is the north elevation, north, north and south, sorry. And this is the west. Oops, I missed one there. Um, if the Planning Commission supports the recommendation of the architectural historian, staff will add the following conditions to the conditions of approval. I'm just going to read it here. Prior to issuance of building permit, the architectural historian shall sign off on a roof plan that has no flat roof and less than a 6 and 12 slope. This seems... <coughs> I know what happened on, on the, there were two of these. Um, so 
Uh, staff recommends the Planning Commission review the application and approve Project uh, 180189 with the revised conditions of approval included with the September 5th errata that removed the language about the variance and included the additional conditions from Public Works. Second, I'm going to back. Or actually, that, that's the end of the presentation. Can we switch to the other one? Thank you, Matt. Um, the commissioners have questions about the staff report? Not at this time. Okay. Um, would the applicant uh, like to address uh, the commission? Hi, Dennis. Good evening, honorable commissioners. Um, a couple issues in this thing. And this has been really a moving target, and this is a historic house. And if you drove by it when this addition is completed, as we have a plan, you will not see any change in the house whatsoever. The roof can't run where we flattened the roof was made intentionally so you could not see it from the street. The only way you could see it is if you drove down the driveways or stood at the neighbor's houses and see the back of the house. Um, two things with this. Um, uh, I, uh, in, uh, in the comments by the, the story, but putting a pitch on the back of the, of, of the house, it's a different pitch from the rest of the house. It's, it's totally unarchitectural. It's something you just don't do in architecture. You don't take two pitches and run them together. And so it would, the house would look misformed if we do it this way. Also, Carolyn Swift agreed, who, who was sat in the Arkansas Review Committee, she agreed with us too that it should be a flat roof with the same pitch in the back. Um, the historian is the only one that believes this. Um, the flat roof you'll never see. You won't know it. You just see the ridge just like you'd see the ridge line in any house. Um, so uh, we, we feel very strongly that the design of the back of the house, the way the roof is, is the best thing for the structure. Um, the the window the window treatments. Um, the the idea is to preserve all of the windows as you see them. In other words, with the they're multi grids, very expensive windows. Um, if you walk up to the front of the house, you'll see they're they're impossible to keep those windows. But we can have them rebuilt identical to what's there. And what we're asking, and um, I'll give you a little education and vinyl tr vinyl coating on windows and what it is and what, what isn't. And we have two of them here, and you can see that a, a, a normal layman cannot tell the difference between a vinyl trim and a wood trim. <laughs> These are, this is one with light trim and without. And so, even in historic houses, you cannot tell the difference. The difference is, is the longevity of the window and having to paint everything. So, visually, you can't tell the difference. Um, you can even get it in gloss or semi gloss to, to match identical to what the colors are now. Okay. So, the, the intent of the owner is, is to replace all the windows. And, and identical to what they are now. There will be nothing on the existing structure that is changed in siding and trim and everything. We'll document every single piece of trim on that, on that house as we, as we do this. Um, there was a third issue. The issue of the garage. Um, we prefer that we be granted the variance. And I'll tell you why. Is, is, that, is that only with a variance, because the historic the, historic, uh, the historian wanted us to put the garage back to where the eave of the gable end comes down to the end. Set that back, we moved the garage back and it pushed us. We, we didn't originally have a variance, but, but she pushed us back. So, so to put a 20 foot garage, which is your coat on the inside, and also is, is a reasonable distance because it allows a person to get out of the car and walk around the end of it. Um, 20, 20 feet is in. So we were, at, we're asking for a three foot a three foot uh, variance to the rear yard. And that's to keep the architectural character of the side of the house. Now, um, the alternative is, is to go to a shorter garage, um, as discussed with, with, staff has discussed with you, where we go to a 17 foot six garage. A 17 foot six garage, 
um, is a difficult di difficult size because you, you, you can get out of your car, the width is fine, it's the fact that you won't be able to walk around the end of it. It'll be that short. That, that difference of, of, a, of two feet makes a big difference in the length of a garage. And I think your code is correct, 20 feet is a good length to have a, have a garage. So uh, what we prefer with this is we would like to, to keep the, the, the roof line as we have proposed it, number one. Number two is, is we would like to um, have a variance to the rear yard setback just for the garage of the three feet. Um, we will accept if you decide to give, give us the 17 foot with no variance, uh, we will accept that too. But uh, we, we've gone out of our way in these plans and with the help of staff to, to to keep the historic character of this house. It's it's the owner's intention they're gonna move in themselves into this house, they have a renter there now. They actually have owned the house for a number of years. They did a land division in the back where they separated a lot. They own it, they're gonna move in themselves and they would like to have an attached garage so it, uh, in, in their elder years now that they can easily go to the garage from their, from their house. Can I add something? Certainly. I've been living in, this will be my third home at the <laughs> I don't move that much. We are both in the 70s. That's my wife. We both own the house. And uh, we're going to stay in this house probably for the rest of our life, whatever that might be. I don't know if it's going to be five years, 10 years, 20. I don't have no idea. But like I said, we're already in the 70s. We have been living in uh, houses where the garage is attached to the kitchen. You get out from the house, you're in the kitchen. If it's raining, if it's dark, if there's a prowler or whatever, at least you're a little safer rather than have a garage not attached to the house. We understand in the olden days, people used to do, you know, used to be a, for the horse and buggy, will be away from the house, and then they change it to be separate. But in the modern time, unfortunately, people like to have the house attached to the, the garage attached to the house. So that's a big plus for us. Um, I've done a lot of research on windows, and everybody that's in the window business, they discourage me highly to get a wood window. In the olden days, this uh, clad finish didn't exist. Now, we're going to make it look exactly the same, with the same grid pattern, with the same size, except the, vi the finish on the uh, uh, vinyl or whatever you want to call it, it lasts, it doesn't need maintenance, because otherwise you gotta paint it, and it, that doesn't ensure that the window doesn't decay after a while. The existing window, they're great, they look great, they do a great job to the house. However, they have termites issues, they don't open, they rattle when it's, when it's, when it's windy. I gotta leave it there, I don't wanna get any money on the house. So I like to put new windows. Yes, if we, it would be great if I can leave the same window if it wasn't for all those issues, uh, and I don't want to go paint every, I'm not going to paint <laughs> every two or three years. So as you can see, if you want to check those two windows, I'll tell you which one is clad and which one it isn't. They both look the same. The te technology is changing. We are, diff you know, sure the house, we want to leave it the same. We so far haven't done, haven't touched one single thing of the exterior. and. We like to live in the house, and we like to enjoy the, the neighborhood, and you know. So we appreciate your uh, your time and uh, uh, whatever you're going. The other thing is, if we can go three feet setback. Can we compromise in something in the middle? Because I want to be able to go in the garage and walk around. I mean, I mean, if the car is parked, I want to be able to walk around. The way we have designed, redesigned now, we gain another foot and a half because we shortened the eave like it was directed by the, uh, uh, what's the name of the, uh, Dale, uh, Dale, mm -hmm. uh, Architect. historian. That's the deal, yeah. And she doesn't have to live in the house. She doesn't to keep the same window. That's great. I'll save a lot of money. But on the other hand, for one thing, Capitol Avenue is not the same road it used to be 100 <laughs> years ago. There's a lot of cars going there. Double window that will give you some noise factor versus a single pane window. And also, when it's cold, because sometimes it doesn't get cold even in Capitola. You, you know, it, it works. So, I know the house was built, it's a great house, and you guys want to look the same look, and I'm not, I'm not, com I'm not complaining about that whatsoever. But we got to live today, not 100 years ago. 
So that's that's basically what I have to say. I encourage you to look. I mean, I, if you can, and you can see that I can even tell. I know which one it is because I I've asked him. But, uh, just to win, add one thing about the 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 vinyl is only on the exterior. They're real wood, wood windows. They're both wood windows. They're, they're, wood, they're both wood windows. It just it has a vinyl exterior for for weatherproofing, and you can order that vinyl almost every any color today. It's okay. we're okay, probably going to use white, but that's what's there right now. Yeah, we're going to stay with the same color pattern. Um, Dennis, is um, is it possible <clears throat> to clad the existing windows in vinyl? I mean, is no, you could take them in. You'd have to rebuild them, Sam. If you would. Okay. The problem, the problem is, if you go up and look at the, the, the wood is in such bad condition on the grids mm -hmm. that the window glass is starting off. Everybody likes the, the, the window glass because it has the melted look to mm -hmm. it. But the, the built, the windows just aren't savable. If you look at them, you're very welcome to walk up on that porch and look at them because uh, we we did everything we could to to find a way to save them and. And uh, they're, they've been painted shut for years. Oh, it doesn't work at that point. Yeah, they don't function no, they anymore. Don't. But that's just part of it. It's just the grid ones are the most difficult ones. The single hung, yes, you could take them apart and you could put the ballocks back into them and, and probably make those work. But not the grid ones are, are the tough ones. Um, I'd, I'd like to say one thing about the processes. And I, and I, I personally have done with a lot, dealt with a lot of historic houses in Capitola. And I, I'm a big fan of that, believe me. And by doing it, one thing that should be in consideration. This is a perfect example of a house that this house would look so much better and so much more real if you would let us keep the same design all the way around the house. If you look at what we're doing, we're transcending from um, a board and batten down below to a siding up above, and all of a sudden we're coming along a wall, and this is beyond the, uh, the north face. Halfway through the wall, all of a sudden we're changing to a board and batten all the way up and down on, on, the, on the structure. See the one on the upper right? See what happens there? It, 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 it's, it's like a circus tent. It doesn't look right. And so my, my contention is is that I still still think, and, and I'll get, Los Gatos does this. They'll let you carry that architectural line. They'll give you a demarcation line there, but allow you to carry the, the design all the way around. And look how much nicer that house would look if we could take, take that that same alignment all the way around with, with the, the beveled lowers and then the horizontal siding and the beadboard siding. M more expensive for them, sure, but it, 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 would, it would really look in place if, if we could do that. And we're fine with, with this being approved, but I'm just saying as a recommendation, look at ways that you can continue architectural style around and still meet secretary interior standards. Thank you for your time. Okay. Yes, uh, Dennis? Den was there ever any consideration given to eliminating the existing garage and driveway? Uh, I mean, part of my concern, I think it's a gorgeous house. I think it's one of the main historic houses in town. But having, you know, a concrete driveway go down both sides of the houses uh, seems to me to, you know, impact how this historical house looks even more than the roof changes that are talking about or you know carrying the materials around so since the new garage and the driveway there i, I believe would meet the parking requirements um i was wondering you know do we really have to have all of this concrete on both sides of the houses um well, one way we can soften that right now, the driveway on the right is, is, is a gravel driveway. It's not a concrete driveway. We can keep it like that. We don't have to concrete that. So it makes its approach to this. Um, the thing that's different about this lot there, it's twice as wide as every lot on the street. It's actually an 80, 80 foot wide while everything else is in the 40 or 50. So it's a wide light to start with. And I can see the, the issue of balance. Um, that, that garage there was built there when they did the land division for the two houses behind it. And I, I don't know what year that was, but... 2000. 2000. So it, it's not that old. And so... Um, but we could... Yeah. This is... Um, but we can keep the right-hand driveway in the gravel. You know, it had, it's always been gravel. We can keep it in that if, that, if that's a concern. Um, I think you, you would like to keep the garage. 
If, if I may, there, um, when the application came in, it was originally discussed with the applicant of would you consider, or with the applicant's representative, um, would you consider a, you know, double tandem garage in this location so that not to pave on the left side? And it's my understanding that they didn't want to have to shift around cars as often, so it would be more convenient to have two driveways when we brought it. Get in in that. But that said, so there is one driveway, and my wife has to get out, and she's in the garage. I got to move the house, the, my car, into the street, which take another parking space. Once I'm over there, am I going to move? Probably not. Probably going to stay on the street. And then, so she's got to wait for me to get out, find parking, if I find parking on the street, which is not that simple to find parking on the street. Capitol Avenue, it's, there is no parking. So... Yes, it give a little more parking, but also it give me the storage. And if I'm in the house and my wife comes, I have to move, and she or the other, or vice versa. That's why the two driveway. And like, like, uh, Dennis has mentioned, that's a double lot basically. Right. So and we have plan, a lot of. Your plan is to keep the right hand driveway. I, yes. To, in but I, I could e either leave gravel or put pavers, which. You know, a lot of people seem to like the pavers or uh, from the standpoint of a drainage, it's a better way to do it. So whatever you guys decide on that aspect. Thank you. Thank you. I have one question. Um, the flat roof, I notice on the plans there's a pull down staircase. That Does that go That's, to the flat roof? or No, that goes up in the attic area. We need to have, by, by, by code, we have to have attic. There's an attic area where the pitch comes up. Okay. The roof is flat there. You can't go out the top. So there's it's no just, access to the flat no roof? No access to the okay. top. No, no it's just, that's just up to get in the attic to... Uh, attic access. Attic access. Yeah. That, I was under the impression that the variance request had been withdrawn. I that, was, too. Um, no, our, our first our first choice would be the variance, but we'll accept we'll accept that the other way too. So, um, but I will go to a huge extent to put a driveway and to put a garage, and have a, a basically a garage which undersizes. I don't have a huge car, but my car barely makes it. I'll have two feet in front, but nothing in the back. So, from that point of view, it would be nice to have another foot foot and a half into the depth of the garage. But if that's not impossible, well, we'll have to live with that. Well, maybe you should address then why you, there are special circumstances here that would justify. Well, uh, I'll tell you what the special circumstances are, is, is that originally originally um, we, we had it so there was no variance required. We had a full 20 foot by code garage. The historian, um, can we see the gable end shot right there, Matt, please? Okay. Um, see, see the gable, see the gable, uh, the eave line coming down right there. She did not want us to cut any of that eave off of there, and so she had us move the garage back so you kept the full length of that eave all the way down that matched the other side, because we were originally three feet forward on this, and we moved it back for the eave, eave cut. So that was a historical consideration, and so it put us in a position where. We had, had to go for a variance if we wanted a full size garage. It was her suggestion to move the garage back. It was now our suggestion. And we brought that out. Yeah. So Please speak at the microphone. That was the suggestion of the historian uh, architect to move the garage back three feet. It was, our, was not our intention to move it back. It was under her direction, we said, oh, let's move it back. And at the time of the meeting, I did bring it up. It's going to be past the setback. There were no, nobody said anything against it. But I, su I see the house next door to mine, the blue house, where, the, where there is a, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, what is it, a dentist? Dentist office. The house is all over the place. It's got an upstairs. That's an historic house, isn't it? I don't think so. No? I don't think so. I don't know. That was an historic Challenge house. Challenge trackers, I don't believe. Was but even so, I even said back. Anyway, like, I'm not going to go there. Okay. So um, our first, and maybe I, I may have confused staff in this thing, but our first intention is is that what works best for us to give us a variance for this. 
Um, the second, the second best was give us a variance of even one foot or a foot, one foot six one instead foot. of three feet. One that would give us a full size garage. We can make that work. What we did, we shortened the even the front on the gable in the garage. So we can, if you gave us a foot and a half easement in the back, we can make this full size garage work for him. Yeah. The the third choice is is what what I gave staff as an alternative, and that is that we have a, a garage that's that's eighteen six to the outside, which would make it. 17 uh, 8 to the to the inside fairly short so mm -hmm. thank you okay thank you thank you. thank you thank you um i guess i i wanted to ask staff how it um it came about that we received this errata indicating that the variance request had been withdrawn and noticed that way it was noticed with the variance originally right. um, we did receive an email I, I received a phone call from Dennis on Tuesday I want to say and he brought up the idea of modifying the plans and with the new plans coming in it was my understanding and it may have been a misinterpretation but with updated plans I said you can submit them if you'd like it, it was not explained that this was an alternative to me it was the modified plans and therefore where the plans did not include a variance we put out the errata stating that uh, the variance was removed so it was definitely a misunderstanding but just to be clear um, modified plans were submitted to you they were submitted to, to us department. Yep. okay uh, thank you um, are any other members of the public wish to address the Commission on this item sure yes first time so my name is Jim Black and I'm a neighbor Hi, on the same street thank you guys for your time yeah. I just wanted to say that I am um, I'm in support of um, this project and I'm really <clears throat> very proud of the work that um, Dennis has done and the owners to make this be as accommodating as possible to the city and I just want to say as a neighbor I think these are all good suggestions that are all very positive for the neighborhood keeping the um, keeping the historical part in in mind with the decisions you guys make so that's all I had to say. All right. So well, do I need to sign in here? To thank you, Jim. Well, if you want your name uh, for the record, just so that we have it accurately, sure. you should sign in. Um, Jim, you're on the phone. Jim, could you um, um, identify? I mean, are, are you a neighbor to the side? Are you a neighbor in the back? I'm uh, a neighbor to the side on Capitol Avenue. On Capitol so Avenue. I'm a okay. couple houses down. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And Jim, I think you dropped something out of your pocket when you stood up. You might want to nice. grab it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any other members of the public wish to address the commission on this item? Um, seeing none, I'm going to close the microphone up front. I'll bring it back to commissioners for discussion and action. Um, Can I bring something else that uh, I haven't mentioned? Okay, I'll 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 reopen it then <laughs> since nobody else spoke up here. So I'll give you three minutes. I shall take a minute. One of the big reasons why we're moving is because my daughter lives close by. That's the, probably the biggest reason why we're moving. Otherwise, we love where we are. We like Capitola, of course, but that's the big reason why we're yes. moving, because she's just around the corner. Yes. Thank okay. You. Yeah. You're welcome. So, um, special circumstances. Yes. Yeah. There you go, Ed. There's your special <laughs> circumstances, right? <laughs> so, um, is there a commissioner that would like to volunteer to start off our discussions? Anyone? Oh. TJ? Yeah. All right. You know, I love these historical homes. So, um, you know, I, I think this is uh, an opportunity for uh, the city and the homeowner to work together and compromise because, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the Secretary of Interior Standards, and, and it's been very vocal. In fact, I tried stopping it during our zoning update, but. We didn't get there, and I like the way Los Gatos does it, and Carmel does the same thing because they actually have a group that takes these homes and looks at, at them as individuals. And and Secretary of Interior Standards, while I, I, it's a process that we have to go the way our board set up, I guess, um, I think it it doesn't fit uh, every home that we we uh, are trying or we look at in Capitola, and we're trying to force a, a round peg in a square hole here. This home is a great example of how you're keeping really the look of the historical home all the way uh, through the whole process. Vinyl windows are appropriate, not only because they're going to last 
uh, in our neighborhood. In fact, most of the homes I see being built on Depot Hill now and the ones that had to remodel the nice wood sash, they're going to vinyl clad because they last longer. Um, I think from a perspective of energy uh, and just general care, I think they're, they're, it's a good move. No one is going to notice driving by on Capitol Avenue the vinyl versus the wood. So I, I, I don't have an issue. I think it should be something that works for the homeowner and is best for the, the house. Um, the roof line, I am not a fan of changing the roof line to 4 on 12. I, I, have, a, I have an issue about roof lines. In fact, go look at my roof sometime. It's, there's a lot of roof line there. It makes my house look massive, but to me, what draws an attention and makes the house look that way is the roof line. It, it, has, a, it has a nice look to it. So I'd hate to see us change to uh, anything less than the 6 on 12 and keep the original pitch uh, on the roof. Uh, I, do, I don't have a, a problem with the variance. I understand what the uh, Leslie Deal was trying to do by keeping that that Eve moving the garage back. There's plenty of space there. This is a historical. We have a, obviously an opportunity and a reason to do that because we want to preserve the look of the historical home. So it's not like we're given a special condition. Um, I'm a garage person. I, I wish my garage was bigger and it's, <coughs> trust me, much larger than yours. So uh, I think it's appropriate to allow the homeowner to have a 20 foot garage. So it's, it's our code. It's what uh, we need to, um, I think work with the individual, and if that means moving into the setback area, then I, I think that's um, that's appropriate. Uh, Mr. Tringali, I, I don't know if you sell cars. I hope not, because you, you do a good job of uh, selling your position, and so I appreciate your uh, insight. But I think this is an opportunity for us to work with Mr. with the Tringalis to um, keep a historical home, but yet add the. Uh, the efficiencies of some new nicer windows uh, that's still going to give the same look and give them a working garage to uh, to make it usable and, and get out of their home. So for me, I, I like what's been presented and I would uh, be in favor of the variance. Just to clarify, TJ, I wonder, um, concerning the roof line, um, are, are, were you saying that you're in favor of the staff recommendation that it should be revised to be less than 612? No, I'm not. I'm oh, in favor not? of the architect's the design. Rigid, yeah, the the architectural yes. design. Okay, thank you for that. Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, uh, the issue of the siting uh, on the exterior of the building, not having oh, the yeah, board thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. All the way around. Were you suggesting that the same type of siding should be continued yes, all the way around? Yes, I, I don't like this hyphenated thing that the Secretary of Interior Standards that make it stand out and be different. For me, if it was my home, uh, I would ask the same thing, that they could keep the siding and make make it look like, uh, so the, the, the portion, the addition of the garage doesn't stand out as something different. So I would be in favor of also allowing the same siding. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Uh, next, who wants to go next? Linda. Yes. Okay. You want you want me to go? I would. Uh -huh. I would. I would Do like to hear. go. Go Okay. Well, well, for me, there's like five issues, and I'll just sort of go through them. Um, I I have a bit of difficulty with the variance because um, I really can't see. It. You know, as the applicant said, this is a double lot. It's flat. It's bigger than most of the lots that we have in town. So um, uh, somebody would have to work hard to convince me to support the variance. Um, I don't have any difficulty with the vinyl clad windows. Uh, I agree. I think technology has changed a lot. And for the average person, they can't tell the difference when they're standing on the sidewalk looking at a house, whether they're vinyl clad wood windows uh, or if they're just plain wood windows. So I could go along with vinyl clad wood windows. Um, I actually think in, in this particular case that um, I, I, I agree with Commissioner Welsh. This is a house that you are going to see, um, you know, the various sides of it. And um, 
if we could do something um, as Mr. Norton suggested by putting something that delineated what the um, old part was and what the new part was, then having the same siding continue all the way around um, uh, would work for me. Um, I can even go along with uh, having the, the 6 and 12 roof. I think it um, I, I think it's a minor detail and really looks better in sort of the overall design of the house. Uh, I would like to see the one driveway remain gravel. Um, and I would even love to see the new driveway, you know, be designed so it can be as, you know, small as it can, you know, something to, uh, you know, soften it up a bit because I do think we have a lot of um, sort of unlandscaped surfaces going down either side of the house. So that's sort of where I am right now. On the variance? Variance, I'm a no on the variance. Can I ask a question, a clarification then? If, if no on the variance, um, are you in favor of allowing them to cut into the eave and have a 20 foot garage? That, that was their original design and I could, I could do that. I, I'm open for not doing the variance if, if we allow them to cut into the eave and still keep a 20 foot garage. And quite frankly, being on that southern side, I don't even know that you're going to notice it unless you walk up there either way. So. Well, I, I think cutting into the eave three feet might be a little much, but maybe, you know, cutting into the eave a foot and a half um, or two feet might, you might, you might be able to convince me of that. Is it my hands? turn? <laughs> Is it my turn? Okay. Um, I'm going to come down kind of in between mm -hmm. the, it's fine. the two folks. Um, when it comes to the windows, it's not the, it's not the trim, it's the glass. It's the glass that looks old, that you can see looks old. In this particular case, the glass is so small in the gridded area. Um, when I went by today, I wasn't really seeing old glass in the gridded area, but the, the rest of it, it does kind of look melted. I um, mean, if there was some way to keep that look in the windows, I'd be fine with vinyl, the vinyl clad. Um, my difficulty with the variance doesn't have as much to do with the garage as it has to do with giving up a parking place in that corridor. Um, when I went over today, there was one parking place within blocks and I parked in it so that I could sit there and look and compare the drawing to see where what the windows look like and as soon as I pulled out of it somebody pulled into it and I wish there was a way to get the driveway and the garage that they want without giving up that parking place I, I, I struggle with that um, I too have always had a problem with the hyphenation it's never made sense to me if there was some way to delineate it without um, changing the siding. And I've seen in some houses, I think there's one over on Central, as a matter of fact, that the siding didn't really change. They did a double band. And they delineate, delineated it with a mm -hmm. that way. So you could tell what was new and what wasn't. Um, if I weren't concerned about the parking, I don't have a problem seeing the preservation of the eave line on that side because you can see it when you're coming down Capitol Avenue that direction there's enough distance between the houses that that side is pretty visible and if they brought the garage forward they'd be compliant but because it's a historic structure they're being asked to put the garage back so not granting the variance because of parking makes sense to me but from a historic perspective, I could live with the garage being moved backward and that being the justification for the variance that we're saving, we're preserving the historic house. Um, would like to see a condition that the flat roof can never be used as a 
a rooftop deck or a garden. When we approve designs on houses, the person who's living in the house today matters. They matter a lot. But we also have to look forward and say, what's the use going to be if that property sells and it's a whole new group of people coming in? Um, so I'd like to see a condition on the flat roof and a condition that the existing garage can't be turned into a an ADU, which I think is okay because of the size of the lot would prohibit that anyway. But if it would be appropriate, I'd like to just see that additional condition on use. Is, is that possible? I'd you know, um, they would have to come in for an application for an ADU because they're allowed to have an ADU on that property because it's over 5,000 square okay. feet, I, I believe. That would conflict so, with state law. Yeah, it would conflict with state law. So can I address the parking? I had the same concern that you had about the parking and losing the parking space in front. So I actually went and looked and they have an 80 foot lot, wide lot. And so they would actually be able to have a driveway cut in there that is no greater than 40% of the width of the lot. Or, but they they could have the this the width that they have because it's 26 feet with the two of them added on so they're just not together but they're split and that so still would split, comply yeah okay. okay anything else okay that was a confusing answer but sorry i'm conflicted <laughs> and i don't think that they can do a, a, a double pane window with old glass no, they can't they can't the only way would be to preserve the, the existing glass in that lower half, which doesn't make a lot of sense if you're replacing it up above. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ed? Let me know if I miss anything. I can check last time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got it right here. The window is no issue. I agree with everyone on that. The, the roof line, I agree with the architect uh, that it would look better with the steeper roof. So. No issue on that. The siding change, uh, Commissioner Welch and I are in lockstep on this issue of the differentiation being more trouble than it's worth in many cases. And not, certainly that extreme differentiation is not necessary. You can do something much more subtle than that. So that someone who really wants to know <laughs> and look closely can <laughs> understand that that section is different from the other section. Um, so this is another example or maybe the best example we've had of where our historic ordinance kind of causes more trouble than it solves. I mean, I, you know, we're all in favor. We, ever since the McHugh Bianca building was torn down and the uh, Cooper House were torn down right away, we've all, you know, we're not going back to that era, but we can go overboard also. And you know, I don't, I don't want to turn our planning process over to uh, historical technicians um, and we've got obviously uh, an applicant here and an architect who are doing a great job to preserve an important building in our community and I think they're doing it doing it in a good faith and we don't need to get bogged down in some of the technicalities that some of the professionals seem to be able to find somewhere in the regulations. Uh, so with that said, the solution to the garage to me is to shorten the eave and not to grant a variance. I think that's a better solution. So I don't really think we're giving up that much in terms of preservation of a great historical asset in our community. And I, don't, you know, I like to hold the line on variances. Oh, that's, did I miss anything? So would yeah. you propose shortening it how much? Well, we can discuss that, whether it's the full three feet or two feet. Uh, I'm seeing uh, two feet uh, in the audience there. <laughs> two feet? Uh, two feet will work because we're going to even the front. We can yeah. Just yeah, so I think that's but a better solution. Would that still be a, a one-foot variance then? My understanding is you're pushing it forward two feet? The we garage. Push, to get the other variance, we need to push it forward three feet, but it only requires to cut two feet off of that eave. Oh, it's okay. I understand. Yeah. So no variance in a right. Two right. No, no, no variance, variance in a two foot. Okay. 
Did I miss can, anything? Can, can we ask the applicant if they're willing to leave the other driveway direct gravel? I want to make it just that on the record. just surface? Well. You want it gravel? I think I want it gravel. I'm sorry. Uh, the the other driveway, you'll agree to leave the right-hand side driveway gravel. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Please speak at the microphone. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the uh, it's uh, the it's it's a gravel base. It, it's uh, decomposed gravel. Gravel. Yeah. gravel. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Not hardscape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like the old driveways used to be. <laughs> can, can we do just the approach? Because probably I would never park in the garage. I'm just gonna park away from the street. Can we put just portion? Of I'll probably never park inside the garage. I don't care the park over there. I use for storage or whatever. Can I have it just the, the first 15 feet with some kind of paver or whatever? Leave it the rest of it. That's pretty long driveway. How long do you think the driveway is? Uh, uh, it's about well, for me, the whole thing needs to be the same material. I think it would look really odd to have a 15 or 20 foot concrete area in there. So, you know, you can talk to the other commissioners, but for me, I would like to see it say sort of the gravel impervious. So, what happened when you spin the wheels in this product? Mm -hmm. You will get them all over the street and. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Okay. They, do, uh, they do a oil base on it so it holds down pretty good. Really? People still put in gravel driveways, and they're, they're good bases, they stay in place. They're not. They're unlike the old driveways. They're not base rock. Okay. 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 Can I ask? Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. Um, oh, is right. the is the current approach, like Dennis? Is the current it. approach to that driveway? Is it concrete at the street? No. Yeah. Just in the curb and sidewalk. Yeah. In the curb and sidewalk. Once you get okay, past that the has to be yeah. for ADA. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Once you get past the curb and sidewalk, then. Yeah. Then it's. That's yeah. Dirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it's it's I'm almost when it's done. It's it's imper it's, in, it's permeable surface. But it's it's you can walk on it. It doesn't kick gravel up. It's right. it's it's like a hard pack. People do it in walkways and stuff like that too. So, okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, well, bringing it back to uh, uh, to um, I guess it's my turn to weigh in on this, and I, I think I feel like most of the other commissioners. Uh, I'm fine with the vinyl clad windows. Um, you know. Um, you know, things have a useful life and they need to be replaced. Even if we required them to keep the old windows, at some point they're going to deteriorate. Uh, and they're not the most efficient. I mean, if you think of energy efficiency, um, it, it is better, I think, to uh, replace the windows. They have the same look as the original windows. Um, certain things, I think, do have to be improved over time, uh, even in, in historical structures. Um, and um, because the important thing is, yeah, people are living in them, um, and we need to maintain a comfortable living environment. Uh, I'm fine with the uh, original proposed roof line, um, as said the other commissioners were. I think it uh, won't be visible, and to me, I think it is a better architectural uh, look to it. On the siding, yes, um, as the other commissioners uh, I agree it should be the same siding. I would like to see some sort of if, um, some delineation uh, between what was uh, the original structure and what is now the new structure. And I'll leave it up to the applicant to uh, uh, provide um, uh, that. Um, n now on, on the variance, um, yeah, I have a one on a, just a process basis. Um, because we have this uh, errata which indicated that the variance request was being removed um, and I would have a hard time now in shifting gears because that's the way it's been noticed uh, from any of the neighbors. And if we now have kind of a tension between uh, the pure historical architectural um, uh, recommendations and uh, imposing um, into the setback into you know the ne surrounding neighbors behind it, I think I'd rather sacrifice as Ed proposed uh, the um, the cutting into the E, pulling the garage up that necessary three feet, so we don't have the need for the variance. Um, and I think. Um, I think the uh, planning director wants to correct you on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so the errata that went out was sent to the planning commission and then uh, placed at the back table. There was no additional notice that went to neighbors 
regarding the change. So they, the, the neighbors and all the oh, public noticing that took place included a variance. I just want to point a point of okay. clarification. So it was not posted on the website at all? No, it was not. Only sent through emails? Just sent to the Planning Commission through emails and placed at the table. And it was sent today, right? Do we get it today or yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday. yesterday. yesterday afternoon. Yesterday. Late yesterday. Yesterday. I saw it this morning. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that raises other questions for me, but um, but we'll <laughs> we'll we'll leave that uh, <laughs> you know, for another time. Um, um, but with that, I, I still think um, that um, you know I, mean, I I would even if the request for the variance stood, I would have a hard time since, as staff recognized, it is an ad additional garage. Okay. Um, and which may take it out of you know the need for uh, the special circumstances on an historical structure, but I think that that's what I would. I mean, I I really like Ed's approach uh, to dealing with that issue. Um, and so, with that, I think are we ready to uh, propose a motion? I also uh, would support you know keeping the driveway, the old driveway, um, in a gravel. Okay. So. Um, if we're going to make a motion, somebody needs to add a couple conditions when they make the motion. Why don't you make Are you ready? Are you? I make a motion to approve the application uh, with adding condition in there that the siding on the house can all remain the same going around as long as on the plans that come in for the building permit the designer um, gets approval of some device to indicate the difference where the old building started uh, where the old building ended and the new part started and staff can approve that change um, I'd like to add a condition in there that the uh, windows uh, will be made to match the design of the original windows in the house, but they can be a vinyl clad wood window. Uh, that the uh, original driveway on the right hand side of the property remain in the gravel impervious type surface. Uh, that the roof on the garage can be at a 6 and 12 pitch and that the garage itself will be redesigned to relocate it two feet forward cutting into the eave two feet to eliminate the need for a variance. You meant the roof on the house didn't you? Evil roof on the house. So it will move forward three feet but it was only going to cut two feet of eave. Right, two, two feet. feet. Correct. Yeah. So whatever that gets them, if the garage is 19 feet, 20, whatever, right. they can cut into it two feet. And uh, is there anything else? I think that's good. Anything else staff good. needs? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah. Um, Lifted but reasonable. With that, that'll bring us to the director's report. Um, I have a couple things to discuss tonight to bring up. Um, and first, I'll just address the errata that was sent out uh, uh, during that application. It should have been additional materials, and in the future, it will be ma additional materials. An errata typically goes out when there's a mistake made within the staff report by staff so we'll fix that in the future that just it's an a, addendum it's an addendum yeah well, and it was an errata exactly <laughs> but we're, we're learning so that, that won't <laughs> since you're talking about that can I make one comment also um, in the staff report um, a couple of places it said that the, that things were denied things can't really be denied until they come to the Planning Commission am I wrong in that no, you're absolutely right in that. And I'll, I'll go back and look at the staff report and go through it with staff and make sure that we don't make that mistake. Um, and it was but just on that application that you bring that? It was that 
I'm not sure which application okay. it was, but it was in the staff report, and I noted it in a couple okay. of places. Sometimes we'll add that to the conditions, so they're in line with the recommendation. But then, if the if the decision is different, we go back and we change the conditions. Okay. So, but I'll take a look at that. Um, also, an update on 4690 Capitola Road. Um, that that home is they continue to work on the home, and it's um, in line with the agreements that have been put in place. So, and recently the city received a payment of $45,000 to cover um, 10 plus years of staff time working on that and attorney fees. So, um, but they're, they're, they continue to proceed. There's a, they're checking in next week on the project. So at the next planning commission, I'll provide you with the latest update. Um, Robin Woodman joined us as the new building official. So that's great news. Um, that's a shared with Scotts Valley. Shared with Scotts Valley. And um, so she started last week within our department. This week she's with Scotts Valley. And tomorrow we're setting up what her schedule will look like now that she understands kind of the dynamics of both locations. We um, just closed a position for a, a building tech that's also going to be helping in the building department and do a lot of the processing that occurs and take some of that strain off of our inspector and building official. Um, and I also wanted to bring to your attention that next week we're going to present for the first time to the City Council the idea of the bike share program. As you've seen, probably the red bikes around town that are coming in from Santa Cruz, their, their system was adopted, I think, in May of this year, and it's been a great success there, and they're going to be taking on that right now they have 250 bikes and they're with the university is now going to join into their program um, they'll be up to 500 bikes is my understanding is what they're looking at so um, we're going to our plan to the City Council to discuss whether or not we should start public outreach to see if the citizens are interested in having a bike share here in Capitola we'll go to the uh, Commission on the Environment and the Parking and Circulation Committees and provide them with an overview of the concept and then the bring it back to city council for direction so we're just starting to work on that and it, it takes some time to get one of those in place but um, just wanted to bring that to your attention if you have any thoughts on that feel free to reach out and share um, and that concludes the director's report thank do you we, go do ahead. we have any information about um, what's happening with the sears site with sears um, closing the store and that application going forward on appeal to the City Council? So the appeal is set for October 25th. We received a letter from their, or an email from their attorney and a phone call asking to be continued to the November, pushed out. Um, they first asked for January and then they pulled back to November. Um, staff We've been trying to communicate with them of what changes they would like to their plans, and there it's been crickets. I haven't heard anything. So um, at this point, we're preparing to have the city council make the decision of whether or not to continue at the October 25th hearing. So, but we'll we'll be bringing forth, planning to bring forth the appeal and have it heard, if not okay. that evening. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, any commission communications? Yes, then. So um, I wanted to bring up the, the issue. Maybe this may have been brought up before. I'm not sure. But of uh, the um, human sign holders showing up on weekends in the village and in the city with um, either sometimes they call them spinners. Yeah. And sometimes this last um, Labor Day weekend we had a liquidation sale someplace on 41st. And they had two people right. stationed uh, in town, and they know that the planning, I guess, department people are not working on those days. Mm -hmm. I think that I looked at our sign ordinance, and although it's not um, in black and white, it seems pretty clear that they ought to get a permit. And it's not fair to other businesses if who have to go through the sign um, applications and comply with all the rules. If somebody can just show up with someone in the middle of the street all day with a commercial sign so I contacted the police department I don't know what they did with the complaint but I think there needs to be some kind of process to have the police let those people know right away that they're they have to have a permit to do that 
So um, my understanding is when it's a person holding a sign, it's, it's freedom of speech, yes. and they can be out there with a the sign. Um, I also saw a hot air balloon above mm -hmm. a mattress company, and we followed up with a, a um, court, code enforcement letter of, um, of warning after the weekend. But if they are standing out there with a sign and they're holding it, and, and I'll if it's commercial, yeah, no, commercial they, speech. It, it's, I it's, think there's, I think they're the protected. Right. But I will check back in with our city okay. attorney and make sure there's been no new. I'd like to dig uh, a little deeper into that because that could really end up being. I mean, it mm -hmm. kind of completely overwhelm all our, uh, you know, sign rules in the village. Would just be all over the place with signs. Right. Yeah. yeah, maybe the city attorney could provide us because I think yeah. there are a couple of recent court cases about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I do agree. I think the court said as long as the person continues to move, they can't stand. That's why you see them sort of dancing around and doing that thing. As long as they're moving, it's a free speech. They're not assigned then. I don't they're not assigned. And you're now seeing like the LED t-shirts. That, I'm not sure if you've seen these, but at festivals you'll see LED T-shirts that are advertising as well. So it's like an electronic sign. That well, you I'd like to there, find so. a way around that because it's, really, you know, in our village, I think it's a big thing, and uh, maybe we could uh, dig into that a little bit. Right. Yeah, and I concur with that. Um, you know, with the people held signs, but um, also want to add to that. Um, I've also noticed um, there've been signs in the medians. Um, one in, one uh, that advertises uh, church at the beach. Um, they tend to go up on bay, um, and um, um, and so and I I don't know if it didn't appear to me that they've gotten a permit. Of course, and also we all have all the real estate signs which go up <coughs> on the weekends. And if you read our ordinance, there's a, yeah, there's this exception for the real estate signs. Right. Yeah. But I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't aware there's an exception for Church on the Beach. Yeah. And the uh, and I recently noticed there's a very large sign at the corner of Monterey and Park Avenue um, for the county fair. I imagine it's on RTC property, mm -hmm. but I still, even if it's private or public property, seem like they would have to get a permit, and I don't know if they did have a permit uh, for such a large freestanding sign. And it. And if it and if they don't have a permit, I think it should be taken down, or you know they should be contacted. And not just nothing about the fair. I love the fair. I go every year. I spend a lot of money there. I wish them the best, but um, I think that's an inappropriate place and the size of the sign. Uh, um, so, any other commissioners have comments about signs? And um, I in, did in response to that. Um, we would welcome any time that you see a sign that you'd like to have removed to send us an email um, and let us know where the sign is and we can reach yeah, out. Thank you, Katie. Um, and then for the public, there's you can always fill out a code enforcement complaint and submit it to the front desk at City Hall or mail it into 420 Capitola Avenue and we'll address any uh, code enforcement issues. Okay. And, and could the public do that by email as well? To they can. To it's online. The forms okay. they can right. fill it out and email it in to right. to yeah. us as well. Yeah, Since we're talking about signs, um, do you have any update on when the signs on the um, the salon at the end of the Esplanade is going to be changed? We approved that. Mm -hmm. They they were having. Uh, Timing issues with the own the, with the whoever was developing the signs, okay. and Matt, do you know the date that that's expected to go in the soap? End of so September. End of okay. September. They've been ordered okay. and they're in production now, and then he's gonna have to come and get a building permit to put them up. So okay. probably end of September. Thanks. And Leslie, I did want to uh, follow up, and I appreciate Katie, you um, talking about the erratas and the addendums, um, but it would. I mean, to me, it seems like that those should at least be posted on the website mm -hmm. so that um, members of the public are equally aware that new submissions and in some cases changes to uh, uh, plans have come in. Um, and I know, I mean, uh, uh, on the notice cards, the green cards that go out, assuming it, it directs them to the website if they wanted to get more information or see and follow what's going on. Um, so I just wanted to 
make that request as well. Any other commission comments with that? Um, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I actually went to court on the